Hello, my brothers and sisters. Welcome back to part two of this teaching. Knowing the difference between the financially blessed and the financially cursed. And we're going to get right into it. To know the difference between the financially blessed and the financially cursed, we must first know the difference between the spiritually blessed and the spiritually cursed. Now, the spiritually blessed are in Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Now, those spiritual blessings that were born into in the mind of Christ in the spirit, they translate. They translate into the first fruit, the first fruit likeness of the spirit, so we can operate in our co-ownership status in Christ in the spirit. So when we desire financial stability as Christians, it comes under the stewardship of the spirit because our living is in the spirit and financial stability comes under the stewardship of our living. The financially cursed, they're in Ephesians 6.12. For we war not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. They're in the high places. The spiritually cursed are in the high places. The spiritually blessed are in the heavenly places, which is the mind of Christ. The high places is the mind of sin, that is the mind of death. So they desire financial freedom. And they go after it. They pursue it in the flesh while the spiritually blessed desire financial stability. And it's added to us in the flesh, but under the first fruit stewardship of the spirit. So we, we have to enter into the living of the spirit before he adds, adds to us the financial and material provision of the spirit, which is the provision of Christ. Let us go to uh, Jeremiah 17, 5 through 9. Jeremiah 17, 5 through 9. 5. Thus, thus says the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in man, and his heart departed from the Lord. Cursed be the man that trusts in man. That's mankind whose heart departed from the Lord. That's mankind and womankind in the flesh, trusting in one another in the flesh, and their heart depart from the Lord in the spirit. First uh, Timothy 4, 1 says, for the spirit speaking, speaks expressly in the latter times that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now it is the spirit that speaking speaks expressly that some will depart from the from the faith. Now, the Spirit of God, according to Romans 8, 9, is the Spirit of Christ. And Christ is the faith, and the faith alone is Christ. So when someone is being seduced from the Spirit, from the Spirit of Christ, they're being seduced from the person Christ. They're being seduced from the new covenant and they're going back to that way of religion where they're brought back to the New Testament. The New Testament is the letter of Christ. The new covenant is the person Christ. We have to go from the New Testament, which is the letter, to the new covenant, which is the light. But they're seduced from the spirit, which is the new covenant, back to the New Testament, which is the letter, which is the letter. And the New Testament was given to the mind of the flesh. The new covenant is for the mind of the spirit. It's for the mind of the spirit. Because we were created in the image and likeness of the man, Christ Jesus in the spirit. And man means spiritual authority. So we as spiritual men and women were created to walk in the spiritual authority of Christ. Okay, that was the, that's the purpose of us being created in his image, in the spirit, 
and bearing his likeness in the flesh according to the fruit of the spirit. The, in the likeness of Christ is the living of Christ. That's where the man and the, the the gospel man and woman is. We're in the living of Christ, and the living of Christ is the leading of Christ. The living of Christ is the leading of Christ. So, the Spirit speaks expressly, First Timothy four one, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, seducing them from the new covenant, which is the person Christ, back to the new testament, which is the letter of Christ. Six, for he shall be like he shall be like the heat in the desert. He's gonna be in, in dry spiritual places. No matter what he accomplishes in the flesh, He's going to be in those dry places in the spirit. There will be no enjoyment of it because he's taking a shortcut to obtain what he desires outside of the spirit. So the, the ability to enjoy that individual won't have. For he shall be like the heat in the desert and shall not see when good coming. He ain't going to see when good comes because he's not going to have any spiritual revelation of good coming. Everything we receive from the Lord, we receive it by revelation of the Spirit. And it translates into the first fruit living of the Spirit, which is the government of the flesh. Anyone outside of the Spirit cannot receive anything from the Lord. Cannot receive anything from the Lord. So he shall not see when good cometh. He, he's not going to know what's coming, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness. The parched places, dry places. He's not going to have that living water. In a salt land, uninhabited. It's going to be uninhabited by light. It's going to be uninhabited by that living water. Wherever there's no living water, everything dies. And Christ is that living water. Christ is that, he is that living water. Seven. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. That's for financial provision. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord for his financial and material provision in the flesh because he's trusting in the Lord in the spirit because he's been born of the spirit. But the cursed is not going to, the financially cursed they ain't going to trust in the Lord. They're going to trust in the flesh. And they're going to make their own way in the flesh. But remember what First Timothy 6, 9, and 10 says. They're going to make their own way in the flesh to obtain the provision of Christ in the spirit, but it'll be unlawfully obtained. 1 Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy, which one, which, which is it? 1 Timothy 6, 9, and 1 Timothy 6, 9 and 10 says that 9. Well, let's go to it. Nine says, For they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Fall into temptation and a snare, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Ten, for the love of money. Now, we can't love money. We can lust for money, but we can't love money. Because God is love. And when we're operating in love, we love what God loves. And God does not love money, nor does he love the things money can buy. God is love. And God loves his creation. But he does not love what he made for his creation. Okay. Uh, for the love of money is the root of all evil. But we can't love money. We can lust for money. But we can't love it. For the lust of money is the root of all evil. For while some coveted after it have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. They've pierced themselves through with many a sorrows. 
many sorrows. Okay, so the the those that uh, that want financial freedom or financial security, they're trusting in the flesh. They're going to go after it. But those that desire financial stability, they're the spiritually blessed. It's going to be added to them. It's going to be added to them in the flesh, but it's it's going to be added in the flesh under the first fruit living of the spirit, which is the government of the spirit, which is the stewardship of the spirit. So blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Whose hope the Lord is. Now, let's go to Psalm 1, 1 and 2. Psalms chapter, uh, the book of Psalms, book 1, Psalms 1, verse 1 and 2. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Because the one that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly is not going to be seduced from the spirit. Because he's discerning between the counsel of the ungodly by revelation of the spirit. You see, Satan cannot walk by revelation because God is light and in him is no darkness at all. But when you're living, when the revelation of Christ is living through you, then you can discern light from the counsel of darkness because you're in the light. So, the blessed spiritual man and woman is not going to uh, walk, walk in the counsel of the ungodly because they can see the difference. They can see the difference between the counsel of the ungodly, which binds you to the flesh, and the revelation of Christ, which is the light of the spirit, which frees you from the flesh. Frees you from the flesh. Okay. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Now sinners are ones still dead in their sins and trespasses. These are the only ones that can be sinners. Because that which is born of God cannot sin. Now remember, in the biblical church, there's sinners saved by grace. But in the gospel body, grace saves you from sin. So a sinner saved by grace is still dead in their sins and trespasses because they were saved in their sins. There's no such a thing. There is no such a thing as a sinner saved by grace. So we got to be careful with that. Grace saved us from sin. We are not sinners saved by grace. One that believes they're sinners saved by grace does not know the difference between the fruit of sin and the act of sin. A Christian is still capable of producing the fruit of sin, but a Christian can no longer, I mean, a Christian is still capable of committing an act of sin, but a Christian can no longer uh, be, through that individual can no longer be produced the fruit of sin because they've been cut off from the root of sin and soul and body died to the fruit of sin. They've been cut off at the root and the soul and body died to the fruit. So they've been resurrected, spirit, soul, and body. But only your spirit was born again. Your soul was redeemed through transformation of your spirit and your body was made alive by the first fruit likeness of the spirit so that it would function in accordance with the living of the spirit. And when your flesh is functioning in accordance with the living of the spirit, your flesh is in the preservation and healing of the first fruits of the spirit. That's where the healing is. That's where your physical healing is. That's where your physical healing is. So, uh, nor stand it in the way of sinners. So, that means you would have to come out of the biblical church. You would have to depart from the biblical church mentality. You would have to go from the New Testament... You would have to go to the New Test from the New Testament back to the New Covenant. You would have to go from the New Testament to the New Covenant. The New Testament is the book. The New Covenant is the person. Where you're saved from sin. But when you have a Bible-based salvation, you're saved in sin. Because the Bible can't save anyone. So you, if you were sa a sinner saved by grace, that means you were saved in spiritual ignorance. You can't see the light. No, you have to be saved from spiritual ignorance 
by the light, which is the new covenant, which is the person, Christ. 1 John 1, 5, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. It didn't say God was the letter. It said God, God is the light. Okay. Um, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful. Okay. Two, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's the law of life. And in his law does he meditate day and night. When you're in the law of life, which is the new covenant, you become Christ-minded. When you become Christ-minded, you are, you are meditating in the mind of Christ from the, the, the coming up of the sun to the going down of the same. The, the, you're in the mind of Christ wherever you are. You're never outside of the mind of Christ. You're never outside of the discernment of between spiritual good and spiritual evil, whether someone is walking in spiritual good or spiritual evil, whether someone has the mind of Christ or the mind of death, whether someone is operating in a biblical faith in the flesh or a gospel faith in the spirit. You're always in the mind of Christ at all times because the Christ life is a gift to us. It is a beautiful life. It's a rich life. It's a life that gives you the ability to experience life beyond what you naturally see. It's the ability to experience life beyond what you naturally see and you, li you, you live life according to what you spiritually know because in the flesh we, we know because we see. But in the spirit, in Christ's spirit, we see through what we know. You see, we see through the revelation of Christ. We see beyond the flesh. We know the good that's coming. And we also know the judgment that's coming. All right. Seven. No, eight. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. He shall be as a tree planted by the waters. Jesus said, if a man believe on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Not a river of living water, but rivers of living water, which means multiple rivers of living water shall flow out of his belly. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. That tree ain't going to never dry up. And those are spiritual waters. Those are those rivers. And that spread it out her roots by the river. And shall that spread it out her roots by the river. And shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit, for he shall be as a tree planted by the river. He shall be as a tree planted by the waters. Those are living waters. The trees are symbolic of us. The waters are, are symbolic of the spirit. And that spread it out her roots by the river. This is that, that river. The, those rivers where he said, if a man... A woman believe on me out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water but this is the river is talking about and sh and shall not see when he cometh because you're rooted in those living waters so the the heat can't scorch you it, it, it can't touch you it's going to touch the wicked but it ain't going to touch the righteous And her leaf shall be green and shall not be, shall be green, that's healthy, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. That's the year of lack. When everyone else is lacking, you're going to be fruitful in the things of Christ because you're going to be, uh, uh, you're going to be yielding the fruit of Christ. So you're not going to, you're not going to cease from yielding fruit. You're going to continue to be fruitful even in the year of drought. You're going to continue to be fruitful. Let's go to Colossians 2. 
Um, as we come to a close, Colossians 2, 6, and 7. Okay, Colossians 2, 6 and 7. 6 says, For as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. It didn't say when you received him. It says as you received him. You received him through his death and resurrection. We had to completely die, spirit, soul, and body. We had to completely die to sin. We died to the root of sin, and soul and body died to the fruit of sin. But only our spirit was resurrected to the newness of life in Christ Jesus in the spirit because only our spirit was born of the spirit. Okay, so when our spirit was resurrected to the newness of life in Christ in the spirit, the soul and body remained dead to the fruit of the spirit. We were resurrected from the root. Okay, so now we abide in the spirit and the work that needs to take place will take place. Now watch what it says in seven. It says rooted and built up in him. So as you abide in the revelation of Christ in your born again spirit, it's going to bring you back to the image of his spirit, of the mind of Christ in the spirit. As you come back to the mind of Christ in the spirit, the soul will be redeemed and mortal body made alive by the fruit of life from the fruit of death. And when that happens, you're then entering into the living of Christ. You go from being alive in Christ as a new believer and entering into the living of Christ, which is the likeness of Christ. That's where you become Christian. That's where you become Christ-like. You go from a new believer to a, a, a brand new Christian, to a brand new Christian. You get rooted and built up in him. Built up as gospel men and women. Built up in the mind of Christ. And established. Established in the faith. Established in the faith. That's in the Christ life. Being established in the spirit. As you have been taught. Okay. As you have been taught by the spirit. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. You have to come under your eternal head, your pastoral head, which is Christ. Your pastoral head, which is Christ. Uh, in Ephesians, uh, Hebrews 6, no, it's 4.15, where it says, For he was at all points we, that we have, 14 says that we have a high priest that is in the heavens for us, who was tempted in all points as we are, verse 15, but yet without sin. And one John says that when we're born of the Spirit, we're abiding in the anointing of the Spirit. Watch this. Watch one John. One John. One John two. 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. Why you need not that any mankind in the flesh teach you, teach you because you've been born into the new covenant of Christ in the spirit. You're under the headship of Christ. <clears throat> because they're going to try to seduce you back to the New Testament. They're going to try to seduce you back to the New Testament, but you're already in the new covenant. You have a new head because you have a new life. In the Old Testament, you're in the flesh and you're dead in your sins and trespasses under the spirit, in the spirit. Okay, so don't conform back to that same pattern. This is why it says you need not that any man, that means mankind in the flesh, teach you. All right? Teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie, even that is it has taught you, you shall abide in him. Even as he teaches you by revelation of the spirit, you're going to abide in the spirit. 
by the power of that revelation. And all revelation of the spirit, which is the spiritual blessings in the mind of Christ, will translate into the first fruit living of Christ. All right. Will translate into the first fruit living of Christ. Well, this is this is um, this is what he's saying here in Colossians. Where it says, established in the faith as you have been taught by the faith. If you're established in the faith, well, only Christ can establish you in the faith. As you have been taught by the faith, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving unto God through, through Christ Jesus. Thanksgiving unto God through Christ Jesus. So we must remember that that which is born of God cannot sin. Because when you're born of God, you um, when you're born of God, you're cut off from the from the root of sin. It is the fruit of sin that separates us from Christ, and what separates you from Christ separates you from God, because the fruit of sin is spiritual. And when Adam sinned, he spiritually sinned. And his, that spiritual sin separated all, all of us from the goodness of God. But only that which now is born of God cannot sin. See, we are fallen creations. Not that which is created by God cannot sin. That which is born of God cannot sin. Because that which is created by God, unborn again, is a fallen creation. Okay, only those born into Christ become a new creation. Only those born into Christ become a new creation. And those are the ones that cannot sin because they're cut off from the root of sin. You see, the New Testament points you to the New Covenant. But all those following the New Testament, they're still in the root of sin. And through them is still being produced the fruit of sin. And the disguise of biblical change Many of them are using the disguise of biblical change to disguise that they have not been that they have not been delivered. Biblical change becomes a disguise to hide the fact that they've not been delivered. God didn't call us to change. He called we are we are salvation is deliverance. We have to be delivered from what we are not changed as we are. All right. All right. So this brings us to the end of this teaching. And uh, I'll be back with you with part three. Part three of this teaching to bring it to a conclusion. Discerning the difference between the spiritually blessed and the spiritually cursed. Uh, I love you in the Lord and I'll see you in the next teaching. Bye-bye.